Hello, everyone, and welcome to Off the Wall. I got Josh with me, and today we're going to be reviewing Bad Batch Season 3, Episode 4. We're a little sorry that this is coming late because both Josh and I are sick. So if you hear us cough, yep. sneeze, anything throughout this, we do apologize because it will probably happen. We are talking Bad Batch Season 3, Episode 4. So what are your non-spoiler thoughts of this, Josh? My non-spoiler thoughts is I'm excited that they just decided to not do what we predicted. I'm just like, here's here's Hunt and Wrecker. Now here's crosshair and and omega and then the next episode and then we, they, they yeah. got away from that and they just basically like gave us straight crosshair omega which to me are my two favorite characters in this series um they're Same. the ones that go through the most growth everyone else is kind of their own thing yes they hunter and tech rip and all of them still have their own growth but crosshair and omega have their biggest have the biggest arc and seeing them together and their bond that they're building um, especially with Omega breaking Crosshair out of his shell and bring, get, putting more humanity to Crosshair, or at least Crosshair doing it. This was a solid episode. I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed this episode. It could probably be considered filler-ish. Pick up right where we left off in uh, episode three with Omega and Crosshair. They land on a planet. Some stuff happens. They get off that planet. Stop on planet. Something happens. Leave planet, which we talked about that uh, in the previous season, that those are the, like the least exciting episodes. But because it's Omega, because it's Crosshair, and we're focusing on the two of them, I think that still made this episode good. So I would say about 35% filler episode because you had that get on planet, do something, get off planet. But it was still progressing their journey of getting away from Hemlock and all of them. Yeah. Um, and plus, you Very still good. had him locking them pursuing. I would have loved to see more of Hunter and Wrecker, but then at the end of the episode, we understand why. Omega and uh, Crosshair crash land on this planet, getting a new fit, uh, stealing some clothes uh, mm -hmm. to walk around on this planet. And you got a corrupt, I don't know if we ever got his name, but Captain Asshole, uh, Cap pretty Cap much. Uh, according to IMDb, it's Captain Man. So they really thought hard on his name. Yes, yeah, super hard. Uh, I'm just going to stick with Captain Asshole. Captain Asshole runs this uh, city, this planet with an iron fist. Thoughts on his character, thoughts on the crash landing and the scenery that we get on uh, this planet. I called him John Hammond because he's building his own Jurassic Park with all of the uh, animals that he had in that hangar. Like, I literally was <laughs> just like, as soon as I got there and I saw all the, the way the cages are set up reminded me of the beginning of Jurassic Park, which is that's two Jurassic Park references, two episodes in a row um, with that, but it's different situations. But the one where the ra they're trying to load in the raptors and the raptor ends up killing, eating the guy. And then they release all the, and they're like, I swear to you, it was like reminding me of, of a couple of, of uh, scenes from Jurassic Park when they let all the um, animals out of their cages. I mean, he was basically a run the mill. You know, just I work for the Empire and something, something yeah, dark side like type of thing. <laughs> what, what'd you say? And I have an English. Yes, accent. yeah, it was definitely evil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was definitely that chicken. It was a that uh, robot chicken of something, something dark side. Like, <laughs> just, just, just the evil, evil, evil words that I will say at an English tone that is at this level of gravel, like. <laughs> And he's just slow mono, just, just, and he, his eyes never change of just the, I know more than you. Fuck, she beat me. Them trying to find a way off of this planet. They don't want to be stuck. That shuttle that they could track is. Crosshair just wants to go to his crosshair ways, which is just shoot and kill people. But Omega doesn't want to do that. She wants to be more clever about the way that they go about things and not to harm other people, even if they are evil. So she tries to bribe the shuttle lady and she goes, we need 30,000 credits. 15 for each of you and they decide to do a little bit of gambling which i thought it was sabak and then we find out from you watching someone it's called balans i'm probably gonna still call it sabak because this is the only time it's been balans has ever showed up thoughts on omega being a hustler and uh getting a lot of her credits this was the heart of the episode is crosshair going along with what omega was doing 
and doing it her way. This was the development of Crosshair and his growth that I'd like just as much as Omega. And you can see Omega being, you know, going from the bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, everything is crazy from the first season to now coming into her own and realizing how to analyze a certain situation and and trying to diffuse it without you know shoot first ask questions later and with her wits and stuff and showing that she's force sensitive um throughout this kind of ep she's reading people very well um obviously with the balans sabak 52 car pickup whatever the hell you know uh, spades whatever the hell they want to play whatever you want to call it guys it's a card game it was more of how crosshair was going along with omega's plan until omega and and still he did not start doing his thing until omega gave him the word which is so crazy this was that i love that dynamic in this episode um for that so that was my favorite part as you were kind of alluding to um with that so that's that's kind of i was waiting for you to kind of cue me up for it because i really like that aspect of that big growth that we get with crosshair um and the music kind of went along with it crosshair's super anti-social she's super caring their dynamic is it reminds me of game of thrones with the hound and Arya stark like in the first few episodes like that first couple seasons with them just doing stuff where he's just like oh damn it, i don't want to do this and Arya is like no we'll, we'll figure it out and it's literally crosshair and omega yeah that that's a great reference there uh we do get uh captain man captain asshole uh decides that he's going to play her in the game. He takes a little bit of uh, money from the establishment going, for my protection here, uh, you got to pay me a fee here in that bar. But he decides he wants to play Omega. Plays Omega, loses, Omega wins, gets 20,000 credits from him. But then he goes, uh, 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 gambling is illegal in this city. You have a fine of 10,000 credits. He also said, too, we want this hound go outside he steals the hound along with a bunch of other animals animals which you referenced to running this town like i said with an iron fist that kid was just like if you want information you got to pay me five thousand credits so again omega still not wanting to hurt people crosshairs like let me just fucking kill someone yeah. like pretty much like he has an itch like he just yeah. wants to shoot people <laughs> and but omega's like no 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 oh. We'll do this my way. And each time Crosshair is following Omega, it's uh, we're losing money, we're uh, getting caught, we're doing all this, but he's still going along with her way of mm -hmm. doing things. Number one, if he's ruling ru the uh, the planet with an iron fist, you figured he'd get the economy under control with the inflation that they're dealing with. Jesus. <laughs> When she was like 30,000 credits, you're like, wow, that's a lot. And then she gets 35, which typically in gambling, you can you can make that much money that quick. But like literally the kid wants 5,000 credits, which is typically like $20, you know, just to give me a hot tip uh, or something like that. So the inflation on this planet was ridiculous. But typically in Star Wars, it's always like super over the top. Like, you know, there's never just been like, it takes me five coins or shillings or whatever you want to call right. it. Right. They're taking one step forward, two steps back, like the whole episode, which is typically how it, how it typically works until there's a lot of, until we get to the pew pew part of the, of the episode. Once, once they got to the, I liked how he was just like, all right, you got me, but I got the planet. I rule this bitch. And I like the dynamic of the fact that, um, and I kind of went back and looked at it, is how everyone, the Empire has sectors that work outside of said Empire. Because I doubt the Empire would want Captain Man to rule it like that unless they were part of the take. And it doesn't seem like they're part of the take. It seems like he's doing the animal stuff by himself with his own little group of troopers. Plus, he didn't know that they were searching for Omega and Crosshair, uh, which makes sense, though, because Hemlock wants to keep it secret because he doesn't want anyone to take credit for his stuff and that's kind of how and what you saw in a couple of times when you go into the empire meaning that everyone's just trying to get that political power in the empire all the all the leaders of it um, we saw that a lot in rogue one uh where they were trying to undermine each other uh to get the credit to get the to get be you know sitting right next to the emperor um for for the power uh, of that so that makes kind of more sense because at first i was like don't they know who crosshair and and, and omega are and then i'm realizing they prop him like probably didn't say that even though he has the full 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 force of the empire behind him the emperor wants to keep it hush hush and once i kind of thought about it i did like that little subtlety 
of that it made sense in the story even though captain asshole was your run-of-the-mill bad guy that he's very straightforward writing but it's a kid's show so i'm okay with it hemlock probably did not tell anyone i'm sure he wants to keep it as secret as possible because i'm sure that he doesn't want palpatine to know right. because then that's a failure and then he could be yeah good point he's probably trying to keep things as quiet as possible while still having the full force of the empire uh right. to try to uh get both Omega and Crosshair. I do have a theory, though, with the animals. He's collecting so much animals that I think maybe those animals were for transport to the lab because they haven't just experimented with DNA with humans. They've also experimented on animals as well and on plants. We saw that in episode two with the vines. So I don't know if that's just him being like a mob boss selling a bunch of animals to try to keep power or if that's those animals had a purpose going to the lab or going somewhere so i'm not sure about that because it has to be a close enough planet through them falling out of hyperspace because of the shuttle deteriorating that it's probably like next planet over through hyperspace to try to send over to the lab. Now Crosshair finally gets to do what he's been itching to do all episode. Omega goes, okay, we'll do it your way. Release all the animals, release the Kraken, because one of them that we only see the tentacles of, I am 100% kills Captain Man there, which he totally deserved. We finally get the release of all the animals, just stampeding all of these officers, these stormtroopers. We know the answer to your question, who let the dogs out? It was Omega. Uh, we finally, <laughs> after all these years, we finally figured it out. Omega was the one that, uh, that let the dogs out. <laughs> it's Star Wars. Um, you can get sliced in half and stabbed 17 times and still come back. So who knows? Captain Asshole might come back. I doubt it. I'm not pretty sure it's just a, it's just a run of the mill. Here's your, here's your one and done villain. Yeah, here's your villain for the day um, type of thing. Because there, there wasn't much character to him where Hemlock has layers uh, to him. Going to Hemlock, I know we haven't talked about it, uh, but make sure I got her name right. Nala Say. Um, yeah, he just, he's questioned her, which typically, I guess they put that in there, but they really didn't need to. Uh, I really didn't think they needed that scene, honestly. Because um, I mean, it was kind of already assumed from the last yeah, episode. Yeah, he kind of established by putting her in a in a cell that he knew they released her. She was the one that helped them out. He already knows that she's the DNA matches. Why do we need the scene to basically say the same thing that we already know from the third episode for being a kid's show and plus being an animated show there's a lot of assumed death because you can't just show it if this was live action it's it's like the cat well, i forget from the marvels that was what it kind of reminded me of there at the end the flirking yeah the flirking. <laughs> they finally are able to now take one of the cargo shuttles uh because they're there where the animals were going to be transported they get on one of those. Crosshair says, this can be tracked. And Omega's like, yeah, I already know. We're going to meet up with Hunter and Wrecker somewhere and they're going to take us off. Crosshair wants to be like, oh, it's been a long time. They might not be alive. Omega's not hearing that at all. Right. And I wish this was a longer trip so she could sit with that and the worry of whether they were still alive or not obviously she's not thinking that in her head but we get the resolution because we as the audience know but she doesn't right. so that would have been nicer if we could have sat with that a little bit longer but it is a kid's show we got probably shit to do yeah. uh, in the coming episodes they land on this moon gorgeous the two planets behind the moon there yeah. like just a gorgeous scene get the bear hug from Wrecker, which all of us need. And yeah. then just Hunter, he gets his baby back. Yeah. He's so happy. Just a moment of joy. And then they do what they do in any kind of drama filled movie or show is like, oh, I had help. And then <laughs> that's when Crosshair comes out. Because Crosshair stays in the ship for the <laughs> that time until his entrance. Right. Into and, the and, scene. It, and, his, and his theme song hits. And by the faces of Hunter and Wrecker, they're not happy, and then fade to black. Yeah, I thought it was great, because you get the bear hug from Wrecker, then you get the slow burn of, like, okay, how's Hunter's going to react? You know, what's this thing? There was a, such good animation, because he hugs her, and then they show his hands get tighter. 
like it was a second where he put his arms around her and then his arms get tighter and it's just showing like finally she's back like you, you just you can just feel all the weight coming off of hunter in that animation which was such a good direction of how they did that scene and showing that wrecker is still you know the big big brother little little john from robin hood type of uh person and he oh we we know you was here or whatever the heck he sounds like how are they going to react to crosshair at this point uh because they know crosshair is not fully a d-bag anymore but they also know that he did go against them and they've been together how long so there's still that dissension un you know not trusting him how could you do this thing that they need to go to family therapy over you got that from wrecker you really didn't see anything you didn't see any uh facial big facial expression from hunter but he didn't smile he was just like oh now we got to do it they like, both look pissed wrecker did look way more pissed but they both look pissed right to me. he still he didn't look happy that's what i'm saying he didn't look happy but wrecker really got his eyes really got like you son of a bitch look on his face and of course you're not going to have and of course, Crosshair's like, yes, long time no see. Like he had that look on him. Uh, like, yep, I was an asshole. Like he had that look on him. Uh, but we're going to get the dialogue uh, and the family. Next episode is going to be called fam Family Therapy um, with Omega being um, the point of reason. They're all going to sit in a circle and they're going to be flying through space and hyperspace. And then they're going to fade to black gonna people. Are going to see Kumbaya? No, no, no. Okay. No, uh, they're going to go um, to, I forgot the name of the planet that the Ewoks are on, um, and they're going to dance with them. Is it the moon of Endor? Endor, thank you. Endor, that's what we wanted. Uh, Endor, oh my god, I'm going to... I gonna... just wanted to double check that before I said something very stupid. No, it's indoor. They're gonna. Someone's gonna come here and take one of my baby Yodas, and I will thank them. Uh, <laughs> I don't need this many. Uh, anyway, that's no here, no there. But yes, I thought this ending scene, for as short as it was, told you everything you needed to know. It got the reunion of the two of them. Uh, seeing getting uh, getting Omega back um, and them being together again was awesome because you got the reaction you expected from both of them. The only little thing that I would say is you really did you only got one real episode of hunter being reckless going after you really didn't get the full force of wrecker really having that conversation with hunter and being like yeah. you know you're too close to this we'll find her dude just you, you you're hunter you're the one that's always the even kill you know what to do at this at the time you like he you i wanted that yeah i feel that that's the only thing but also to the don't like filler episode of me I'm I'm okay with with the decision they made. That's but like I said, it's a little nugget. But I just wanted that that interaction between Hunter and Wrecker, of because you saw the carelessness um, decision making that Hunter typically didn't do because he wanted back Omega. And plus, they've been gone for like you said, like six seven months. And Wrecker not being careless too. Right. Right. Yeah. So them being the opposite, like I said too, with the I wanted Omega to sit with. Uh, the thoughts of whether, but she's probably sat with that this whole time that she's been in captivity, pretty much, of whether they're still alive or not. If we could have let some things there breathe, probably have a lot of stuff to get through. Um, so I'm fine with the way that they did things. What do you think is going to happen next? What uh, theories do you have? I mean, obviously, we're going to have the, you know, I don't trust him. They're going to get into some type of thing that they have to do. They're going to let you know, hey, the Empire is still coming after us. So they're going to have that conversation. Basically, the next episode is going to be the Hunter, Wrecker, Crosshair, not trusting each other. Tiff, Omega's going to basically be the even-killed, Force-sensitive um, badass. Can they go back to Pabu? I don't know. I don't know um, on that. Because why would why would you go back to Pabu? They might go look for, they might go look for tech. You don't know. There was nobody. Uh, allegedly allegedly so they might meet up with echo and rex uh, for that but i think they're gonna have the episode of them doing the family therapy-esque where they and they get into a situation where they don't they you know meg is getting like well we need like leave him on the like you know leave him on the ship we don't need him and then she's like no but we need him whatever kiwi 
accent is. And <laughs> and then she and she was like, he's he's got me here. I, w- I wouldn't be I wouldn't I've been able to found find you guys as quick as we did if it wasn't for Crosshair. And it's like, fine, let's go. Yeah. Obviously, we're gonna get Echo and Rex eventually, but and I also think we're we're gonna go back to the planet. I want that Ben Schwartz voiced droid back. He was awesome. I can see an episode where it's the therapy session, but Rex is the therapist. In the second episode where they were like, oh, Rex and Echo are not ready yet with the reinforcements to find Omega. So I do feel that if they don't come in in the next episode, they are going to come in in episode five. uh, Because we already had the reference to them in episode two. And then Tech just shows up out of nowhere, like freaking Gandalf the White, and (laughs) it will be great. This is how you do character development over three seasons, guys. Uh, this is the, the, this episode kind of was a culmination of Crosshair being growing as a character and trusting Omega. Omega showing the leadership uh, now that she has and understanding the world around her and how to solve the issue of the world that she is in. Whereas back then she was just everything's perfect because I don't know any different. But now she's got a little she's got a little more callous to her, and she understands and plus the her force sensitive stuff is showing, but it's not like she's not lifting rocks or anything, um, but she's using it to her advantage without being for she's force sensitive. You know, they're not overbearing it. So, so far the writing has been very good. Uh, this, this season, even episode two, I would agree so far. Thumbs up on bad batch. See episode, thumbs up season three for both of us. I'm so that's Josh. And thank you so much for watching. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in episode five.